Well, hello everybody and welcome back to G-Bears Off-Grid Ways Homestead in the Desert. Yeah, we're looking at some wind sucking towards the clouds over there. Um, there were some really big thunderheads out that way. They've all moved over to that direction and broke down a little bit. But the uh, rest of the sky is pretty clear. Smoke is uh, still a little hazy down through the, the bottom there. You can see it, the, the smoke in that. But uh, for the most part, uh, decent sleeping. Anyway, in the past couple of uh, days, I've gotten a couple of requests for the model number of the Viking... Um, uh, automatic battery charger so I promised I would show the box okay let's start with side number one here's the box 2815 amp fully automatic all right let's rotate the side here and there's the information on this side. And if this fly do doesn't get away from me, I am going to lose my temper. All right. Get away. That fly has been bothering me ever since. Every time I go in that room, it comes after me. All right. So here's the information on this side. Rotate it one more time. Here's the information on the side. There's the uh, the number on it, 56796. And uh, there's the SKU on the, I mean, uh, the barcode. And one more time. And here's the other side. All right, so this thing is a microprocessor and it pretty much does everything. Oh yeah, here's two of those uh, those panels I bought from my friends down at uh, Alltech Electronics in Santa Ana, California. Um, these are 305 watt panels and uh, yeah, I need to clean them off a little bit because when I'm carrying these things, they're a little on the heavy side. So when I was carrying them, I had them pressed up against me. I got a little smudge on them. I'll wash them all down with uh, some Dawn dishwashing liquid and water. And it cleans them right up. So I got these temporarily laid here so they'll grab the morning sun. And what I did today was I came in here and I wired up my batteries. And I got the, uh, the inverter now is running off of these four L16s. And uh, I had a Wanderer and that my friend Andy had given me. And I had that old MPPT controller that's a hybrid controller. And uh, both of those or each one of those is 400 watts only. So each one of those panels is 305 watts. So I got one panel going into one and the other panel going into the other. Now I did order a Midnight Classic 150 online today. I'll get that pretty soon. And uh, that was, uh, it wasn't really that bad. I found a, um, a great uh, re refurbished model by the manufacturer. And it was uh, just around $500. So that's pretty cheap for a midnight 150. I figured I'm going to go that way. And they give me the same five-year warranty as a brand new one and all of that stuff. They said there might be a few little nicks and scratches on the case. I don't care about pretty. I want function. Everybody knows that if they follow my channel. Function first, pretty later. That's why these wires are not all 
squared off and nice and neat, I had to get my system back up and running. So I took the power off of all of these batteries up here and I switched it down to here and I'm running it through the um, the cabin right now. Everything in the cabin is running without a problem and the batteries are still, even though the sun is set, the batteries are still at full charge. So no big deal about that. Um, I did call up the place I bought these batteries from and say, hey, if you got two more over there, put them aside and I'll come in and get them. And I, I got room for two more down here. And these four actually take up or make up the same power that I had in eight batteries right there. So if I go to six, that's going to take half of the next bank up here. And that's a going to cut me down to about half of what I had before but uh, that'll get me through the winter and then in the meantime I can plot plan and save and get some uh, other things done I got my midnight classic coming I'll get that uh, hooked up here and uh, that'll take care of that now I also looked at uh, make sky blue and I'm thinking I may order one of those but I want to do a little more research, find out if they're compatible with the Midnight Classic so that I can hook the two together and kind of uh, daisy chain them and let the Midnight Classic control both of them. Because the Midnight Classic I ordered also has Ethernet and all of that, so I'll be able to check remotely. Uh, if I'm out of town, I can check remotely to see uh, what everything's happened, what's going on up here. And I like that idea. That's a good thing. The other thing is it also has its uh, all of its instructions and all of that stuff built right into it. So you can learn, you, you can go to learn and it'll connect to my computer. I can go on my computer. I can go on my smartphone um, through the same uh, internet and I'll uh, be able to work with the system and and adjust the system to be the way I want it. So I've been told that the uh, Make Sky Blues are good. I'm going to try those. That's, other people are telling me Outback. Go to Outback. Well, you know what? So far, online, with all the information that I've been gathering, nobody at all ha can argue the fact that Midnight Classics are the best. That's all there is to it. So I had to go there. And if I buy a Make Sky Blue and it's not compatible, well, that'll be a backup just in case. Or I may use it up at my water tower uh, when I decide to put a pressure pump up there so that I can get rid of the little uh, motor, uh, motor home or camper pump I have inside the cabin. Every time you turn the faucet on, you have to listen to rrrr inside the cabin. So if I set that up at the tank, up the high side, with a pressure um, pump, then it'll be way over there. I'm talking about noise. Okay, now remember yesterday, I was talking about my 6500 Predator here. And it was kind of noisy when I was standing right here by it. And my neighbor came by and uh, picked up a few items that I grabbed for them while I was in town. And uh, we walked over to the back side over by the panels and I said, you know what? This thing is already like 60% uh, muffled just going that far. We're only 15 feet away from it. Then we moved a little bit behind the cabin and it was even more muffled. I said, well, that's cool. Well... I started it up yesterday at 2 in the afternoon. It says 14 and a half hours runtime. Okay, now I have to admit I did add a couple of gallons of gas before bed. There's a gas gauge on this thing. Okay, and I did add a couple of gallons this morning. But 14 and a half hour runtime. Well, I started it at 2.33 in the afternoon yesterday. It ran all day long under load, and I went to bed last night. Now, in my bedroom, I could not hear this thing running. 
I even woke up a couple of times during the night thinking it had stalled out on me. And I was going to go out and check it up, make sure it didn't blow up or anything like that. Well, it was still running just fine. When I got out to the living room, I could hear it running. But just a muffled run because I closed the windows in the living room. So all night long, I never heard this thing running. And my idea is I'm going to build right here. I'm going to build a cinder block concrete floor um, generator room. So the generator will be in there to, to fire up for emergencies whenever I need to. And I'm going to bolt it right into the concrete floor so it can't be stolen. I'm going to have a locked door on the, um, the generator room. So they have to get through the locked door first and they're going to find out. That is bolted to the floor, and I'm not going to tell you what type of specialty volt bolts I'm going to use to bolt it to the floor, but there will be eight of them holding it down to the floor. And on the specialty bolts where the tool fits in, they're going to be filled with epoxy. So you can't just use a tool to take them out. <laughs> like that sinister laugh. All right. So that's the uh, next thing on there. And uh, th that was just outstanding last night. Um, I had this running with the batter that battery charger in there and connected to the old battery bank, which was still connected to the inverter running the house. And I got it this morning, and I still had electricity in the cabin. So that was a good thing. So this thing does its job. And when my friend Andy comes out, he's going to like this because... This has got enough power to run the air conditioner in his motorhome. So he can uh, just pay for a couple of gallons of gas, throw it in there, run it all night long if he wants. I can't hear it in my bedroom, so it won't bother me. And uh, he can run his air conditioner. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? All right, Andy, what do you think of that? So that's about it. Chickens are doing well down there. Just uh, fed them and watered them and made sure everything was going good. No more casualties since those other three. I don't know what that was all about, but it'll probably rear its... Uh, let, let's forget that. It's not a good thing to think about. Um, and I'm getting about three eggs a day, so that's pretty cool. Filling up my eggs. Don't have to buy eggs anymore. If I see anything out here trying to get at my chickens, they're going to get led to the head. That's all there is to it. G-Bear, thanking you for joining me tonight. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up down there. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of stuff going on here. We're getting down with things are starting to cool down a little bit. Now, I had the, the winds that... Uh, I want to do this real quick before I close off. I had the winds that tore the uh, cable off of my... The guy wire off my... A turbine but you know what with all of those heavy winds no damage to my greenhouse without adding any extra screws or anything or any extra clips to it just the way it came no damage and even the top vents have been open and they wobble a little bit in the wind but no damage so it's passed the test now all I have to do is build the breezeway between the two and uh, tie them together and get ready for the winter time where I can grow crops inside of my greenhouse and have to fresh tomatoes all winter long. This is G-Bear thanking you for joining me and signing off.